questions 103 and 104. So the little passage tells us about half lies and half times and the passage says they're not the same thing. But it doesn't matter because we calculate them in the same way as we'll soon see. I personally would not solve the problem by making any tables but I understand that for some people it's easier to imagine or to see it but I would use the standard equation which I put on the right side which is one half to the power of n so that can be used for half lives or half times it's just a math trick where n is equal to the number of half lives or half times this is similar to doubling time for bacteria or fungi but for doubling time it's 2 to the power of n where n is equal to the number of doubling times that also comes up periodically on the exam. So now let's examine this question 103. A radioactive material has a half-life of 10 minutes. How long will it take for 90% of the material to be transmuted? So of course transmuted is just another word for mean, meaning changed. So obviously in this context means that portion or 90% is no longer radioactive. So a simple way to do this is to say that when no time has passed, we have 100% left. Then when 10 minutes have gone by, that being the half-life, then we have half left. Another 10 minutes go by for a total of 20 minutes, we have half of that left, so 25%. Another 10 minutes for a total of 30, half of 25, 12.5. Another 10 minutes for a total of 40, and half of 12.5, so 6.25. So 10% represents somewhere in between 30 and 40 minutes or 3 and 4 half-lives. An easier way is just using the equation 1 half to the power of n, where n is equal to the number of half-lives. This shows us how much of our pure sample is left, which is just one-tenth, because 90% of the original sample has been changed and is no longer radioactive. So mathematically, this is easy to determine because if n is 3, we have 2 cubed, which is 8, and so we have 1 over 8. So n value of 3 is a little low, so we try 4. 2 to the power of 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16, which is too high. So that means it has to be between 3 and 4 half-lives. And the question stem told us that 1 half-life is 10 minutes, so 3 half-lives has to be 30 minutes, 4, 40 minutes, so it has to be between 30 and 40 minutes. So I think this is a very efficient way to solve the problem. Now question 104. As a distraction, they start by telling you what the half-life is. We're already told that half-lives are not equal to half-times. So now we focus on the half-time. So we have 1%. So as Acer typically does, we worked on a question that somehow makes it a little easier to do the next question. So one technique is that we'll just continue the table to see what 1% would be like. So half of 6.2 is 3.1, half of that around 1.6, half of that around 0.8. So in terms of half-lives, we went from 5, 6 to 7. And this is how much was remaining in the body between 13 and 14 hours. So let's take 14 hours. Do you remember how one half-life was 10 minutes? So four half-lives had to be 40 minutes, 10 times 4. So now we go in reverse. We have 14 hours for seven half-lives, so that means one half-life has to be two hours. 14 hours divided by seven, just as we would divide these numbers by half-lives to get the half-life. In question 103, we do the same thing here for question 104. So the answer for 104 must be B. And the alternative solution is to realize 1 to the power of n, of course, is just 1. It's just 1 multiplied by itself n times. So this equation, through cross-multiplication, becomes this. And so you would try 2 to the power of 6, which would be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, which is too low. So just double that, and that would be 2 to the power of 7. That's 2 times 64, which is 128, so that's too high. So we know it's between 6 and 7, but closer to 7. And so we divide the 14 hours by 7, and we get 2 hours. None of the other answers are even close, so for 104, the answer is B. And if you're struggling with math, you can look at Gamsat Math Chapter 3, 
and Half Lives, Physics 12.4, but especially the chapter review questions and the questions in the Heaps book.